hi students in our last video we had discussed about testing and unit testing in this video we are going to discuss about black box testing as we have already seen in any engineering product it can be tested in two ways the first test approach takes an external view and it is called black box testing and the second requires an internal view and it is termed as white box testing in this video we are going to see in detail about black box testing black box testing also called behavioral testing focuses on the functional requirements of the software that is black box testing enables you to derive set of input conditions that fully exercise all functional requirement for the program black box testing attempt to find errors in the following categories incorrect or missing function interface errors errors in data structure or external database access behavior or performance errors initialization and termination errors test or design to answer the following questions how is the functional validity tested how was system behavior and performance tested what classes of input will make good test cases is the system particularly sensitive to certain input values how are the boundaries of data class isolated what data rates and data volume can the system tolerate what effect will specific combinations of data have on system operations the first step in black box testing is to understand the objects that are modeled in software and relationship that connect those objects stated in another way software testing begins by creating a graph of important objects and their relationship and then devising a series of tests that will cover the graph so that each object and relationship is exercised and errors are uncovered to accomplish this test you begin by creating a graph a collection of nodes that represent object link that represents the relationship between objects node weight that describes the properties of a node example a specific data value state behavior and link weight that describe the some characteristics of link the symbolic representation of graph is shown in figure nodes are represented as circle connected by link that takes a number of different forms a direct link represented by an arrow indicates that a relationship moves in only one direction bidirectional link also called symmetric link implies that the relationship applies in both directions parallel links are used when a number of different relationships are established between graph nodes as a simple example consider a portion of graph for word processing object 1 new file object 2 document window object 3 document text referring to the figure a menu selects on new file generates a document window the node weight of document window provide a list of window attributes that are to be expected when the window is generated for example starting dimensions background color text color etc the link weight indicate that the window must be generated in less than 1 second an undirected link establishes a symmetric relationship between new file menu selection and document text and parallel link indicates relationship between the document window and document text so this graph based testing methods can be used for many cases like transaction flow finite state modeling data flow modeling timing modeling etc the next one is equivalence partitioning is a black box testing method that divides the input domain of a program into classes of data from which test cases can be derived let us consider the below example where every otp should includes only six digits equivalence classes may be de defined according to the following guidelines if an input condition specifies a range one valid and two invalid equivalence classes are defined see for example here the accepting percentage range is between 50 to 19 so one valid case and two invalid case is shown in your screen the next one is if an input condition requires a specific value one valid and two invalid equivalent classes are defined that is here a mobile phone should have only 10 digits 
So, one valid 10 digits and two invalid inputs are shown in your screen. The next question one to specify the member of a set where again we can have one valid and one invalid equivalent classes in a set. The last one is boolean one valid and one invalid classes are defined. So, these are all the guidelines used to define the for the derivations of equivalent classes test case for each input domain data item can be developed and executed. Test cases are selected so that the largest number of attributes of an equivalent classes is excised at one. But normally a greater number of errors occur at the boundaries of the input domain rather in the center. It is for the reason that boundary value analysis has been developed as a testing technique. In short, it is known as BVA. Boundary value analysis leads to a selection of test cases that exercise bounding values. Boundary value analysis is a test case design technique that complements equivalence partitioning. Rather than selecting any element of an equivalence classes, BBA leads to selection of test cases at the edges of the classes rather than focusing solely on input conditions. BBA test cases derive from the output domain as well. Guidelines for BBA are similar in many respects to this provided for equivalent partitioning. The first one is again, if we have a specific ranges bounded by a value A and B, test case should be designed with the values of A and B and just above and just below A and B. If an input condition specify a number of values, then it should be exercised by minimum and maximum numbers, value just above and below, minimum and maximum are also tested. So, like applying guidelines 1 and 2 to output conditions, for example, assume that a temperature versus pressure table is required as output from an engineering analysis program, test case should be designed to create an output report that produces the maximum allowable number of table entries. If internal program data structure have a prescribed boundaries, we are certain to design a test case to exercise the data structure at its boundary. Next one is. There are many applications in which the input domain is relatively limited. That is, the number of input parameter is small and that value of each of these parameter may take are clearly bounded. When these numbers are very small, it is possible to consider every input permutation and exhaustively test the input domain. Orthogonal array testing can be applied to problems in which the input domain is relatively small, but too large to accommodate exhaustive testing. The orthogonal array testing method is particularly useful in finding region faults and error category associated with the faulty logic within a software component. When orthogonal array testing occurs, an L9 orthogonal array of test case is created. The L9 orthogonal array has a balancing property that is test case are dispersed uniformly throughout the test domain, which is shown in right hand cube. Test coverage occurs the input domain is more complete. So, it can be used for example, you consider the send function for a fax application where we have four parameters which is shown in the figure. Uh, this type of cases can use the orthogonal array testing. So, in this video we have seen about black box testing where we have four different methods graph based testing, equivalent classes, boundary value analysis and orthogonal array testing. Thank you.